ויהי בימי אחשוורוש הוא אחשוורוש המולך מהודו ועד כוש שבע ועשרים ומאה מדינה gather round my friends and all distinguished guests tonight's the night of Purim for jokes and japes and jests we celebrate a triumph a tale of how Esther faced the king and managed all the Jews to liberate from Haman's wicked murderous decree of course she had some help her cousin dear took action against some base skullduggery But Esther charmed the king, that much is clear. A cast of characters, prejudice grim, a drunken king, a self-respecting queen, a minister who had it coming to him, a pair of rogues who really were quite mean. Who is missing in this book does not appear, or hasn't until now, perhaps this year? Can all the vast terrain of Persia's land appear within the cockpit of your screen, the banquet scene with wine, the palace gates, the monarch's bed, the beauty of the queen? This year, our play on camera we shoot. Now, players all, thy microphones unmute. I know you think you know who I might be in these days of plague detergency, but life just sometimes isn't what it seems. I do Thursdays, wash and dust and clean. I don't do shirts because ironing's not for me. Ew! Mrs. Feather, what dost thou hear? Just dusting, ma'am, just sorting out these shelves. Well, hurry up! The king's well nigh downstairs. If he can make it drowned in these affairs. I see he's at the cellar, ma'am, again. Tis not your problem, Mrs. Feather, that he drinks, or whether it's the fourth or seventh day on which he's parted in his royal fray. Oh, except it is, because everything's my business. Him with the drink, me having to wash up them royal beakers while he shouts and snorts. There's no restrictions here within my court. And what a mess within, without, who knows, for all of them need bringing into line. No social distancing, no wearing masks. For all I know, not one of them will last beyond this troubled and unprecedented time. I'm loving every moment of this bash. Still more down in the cellar of my stash. Just one more drink. And then I'll call my Vash to show her beauty to this crowded crash. You mark my words. She'll surely fail to show. For all her beauty, she is sound, I know. And let that crush your narcissistic bent and give yourself one well-deserved dent. Tell him A will not before him come or diadem wear or any other thing just because he is the Persian king. I'll let his fury burn ere I succumb. What? She will not come before the king? That wrinkled witch? That pretty masked up fright? What shall be done according to the law to Queen Vashti for disobeying her knight? Now, just sit back and watch this silly man listen to his spads as they deduce that one queen's word against the royal king will make each wife defy and load their spouse. Once you thought you'd rid me of my presence. But now, tis I who leave your royal state, and you can find yourself another queenly mate to bear your crude and coarse and drunken date. I have no mercy on this Persian king, 
What bloated ego sacks his wife the queen and advertiseth for a second wife to send all hapless to his grim harem? <laughs> now, blow me down. What have we happening here? He's taken in young Esther, carried off from Israel with her cousin Mordecai from Benjamin's tribe, living humbly with his cause. So fair. They live a quiet life in peace. I cannot bear to see thee go from here, O oh Esther dear. What would your parents say? You must not tell the court your origins or that you worship as a faithful Jew. Promise you'll not disclose it, e'en to a few. I promise, cuz. There is no cause to fear. Take your mask, my dearest cuz, and pray. For Covid lies in every street and way. The king has failed his moonshot test and trace. We must therefore for heartbreak days be braced. I've been around, you know. I've been in dreams and visions. I've spoken much to men till now about their prospects. Moved them from one place to pastures new. I've climbed a mountain and come down. I've had my words engraved on stone. Oh, people try my patience all the time. I am as old as the mountains and the valleys, old as the rivers that flow endlessly to sea. So why now, ending here just cleaning floors, mopping up the mess made by this king? There's no one here to talk to. No one asks me questions. No one hears my voice. Bring on my hari now. Let each young girl come here before me with a fetching twirl. Six months have they with perfume and with myrrh sprayed themselves. My interest do they stir? This Esther have I seen in my harem. I love her more each day. I'll make her queen. I walk here daily now that Esther's here. No. Let me rest before the palace gate. Ah, oh, here's a space right here just by these guards. Your steer's a vaccine, right? The one for him. And while he's fast asleep, cough in his face, and he will catch the plague, and then he'll die. What's this I hear? A plot against the king? Yes. But they've got stacks of that vaccine stuff in palace vaults. They have AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, plus that Novavax. You haven't said which one I am to steal. No, takes a lot. We'll sell them to Iran and ship them to Khartoum in capital Sudan. <gasps> oh! I've got that agent, Novichok, to hand. It's somewhere here, with all my contraband. Why don't we poison him? That would be grand. The Kremlin will be pleased. They'll understand. What passes here before my very eyes? A treasonous plot to assassinate the king. I will to Esther to relate this word, and she in turn will tell him what I heard. Now is the winter of my discontent, made even darker by this base event. I am the secret agent normally of all crime and justice. In case you didn't know, twas me who hardened wicked Pharaoh's heart and brought those early plagues on that upstart. These people think they need me not. They blunder. Are they worthy of my signs, I wonder? Oh, glory shall I wear, not for a day, but for a month, a year, a lifetime's play. Here stand if I, much higher than those spats who fought upon the kill king, but call him mad behind his back. <laughs> oh, Rashnu, what Ellis cough doth rack my chest? What fever sits upon my sweaty brow? I will repair 
to Barnard Castle. Straight a drive to the thing to test those grainy eyes. Or well, there you shall find me well accompanied with wife and son. We're all infected now. I cannot find a place within this play. I'm stepping out this world. They don't need me. I'm tired, fed up. They've time for drunkenness, deceit and all those vices, but not for me. I'm back home now, after my little jaunt. And still that Mordecai refuses to bow down. Although he's daily told to kneel to me, he hears me not, and I am filled with rage. I will not arm the man, but mark my words, I will cast lots. And then we'll see what day is set to do away with all those Jews. <laughs> Your Majesty. There is a certain people scattered and dispersed among your folk in all the provinces of your fine realm. Oh, their laws are different from all other laws, and they do not conform. Sign this edict here, sir, for their destruction, and I will pay 10,000 silver talents to your bank. Sounds good to me. Here, take my ring and do with these Jews and funds what you see fit. Now I fear the prejudice and bigotry this man unleashes through the Persian realm and that my folk will suffer at his hand. Is there no one here whose cries will come from Shushan? From heaven I'll hear their groans and rescue them. You really don't belong here, Mrs Feather. Remove yourself from my majestic sight. Back off and leave things be. We don't need you. You're not a help. You're more a pesky blight. God's sake, let me sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the death of Jews. I tear my clothes in sackcloth, wrap myself, pour ashes on my head and walk barefoot throughout the city weeping. For we are sold, I and my people, betrayed by king and his decree, directed to the king's satraps and to the governors of every province and all officials in every language, we're done for. To Shushan Castle. This must be fought, even though I know my cause will be distraught. <laughs> The written text of law spells out our death. My cousin bids me to the king repair and plead with him with every ounce of breath to save my people from destruction and despair. Yet all must know, to come before the king unsummoned us, there is but one decree, that they must be put to death. But if the king extends his golden scepter, they will live. I am not called or summoned thus for 30 days. Your cousin, ma'am, has sent me with this note and bids you read it now, ere it's too late. Do not imagine, cuz, that you, of all the Jews, will find escape by living with the king. If you keep silent at this time, relief will come to us for, an, for another place, while you will perish with your father's house. Who knows, perhaps you will find yourself within this plot for such a crisis. Relief will come to us from another place. Now comes the crunch for this calamity. And still I ask myself, she could in amity call out for help and beg me for my aid. For I was there for Abraham when he took the knife to plunge into the neck of one who was to him his beloved younger son. And did I not respond to Israel's cries when at the Sea of Reeds they looked on high? Then parted I the sea so it was dry and they could cross on sand beneath the sky. This is a different book and funny game that does without my outstretched arm and fame. Stretch 
arm and sceptered fame I give to thee, beloved queen. What troubles thee the live, this live long day, and what is your request? I would my kingdom's half be your bequest. Uh, your majesty is kind. I'd like to invite you to dinner tonight. And Haman, too, of course. <clears throat> of course it shall be done. What ho! Tell Haman to obey the queen's command, for we will exceed this night to her demand. So, is this Esther's test her sticking point? She screws her courage to her needlepoint. A second dinner invite to her joint. Oh, this is a peacock feather in my cap to be invited with the queen to sup. I can control my urge to beat that Jew who will not rise or stir as is my due. What ho! My husband comes back from the palace! What news, my dearest? Soon to be the king! <laughs> oh, Zeresh, dear, my little peach! <laughs> not yet. Nor be is it to speak like this. And yet that Mordechai, that exiled Jew, will not bow down to me. And little can I do while he goes free. Why, husband dear, you lily-livered thing, you can erect a stake and tell the king that Mordechai be hung upon its string. Oh, yes. Alas, for sleep deserts my cushioned pillow. Who is there without my chamber now? Bring me my book of records, read to me. Let me learn the doings of my realm. It came to pass, Your Majesty, on Monday last that Big Tan and Teresh were revealed to do away with you by Novichok and steal your vaccines from your palace stock. And what honour or advancement is conferred upon the man whose king he hath preferred? Why, none is yet conferred upon this man. Who is there? Ah, Haman, just the man. Come in, dear friend. What should be done to the man the king desires to honour? What would the king desire to honour more than me? <clears throat> Before the man whom the king desires to honour, a let royal guard be brought, and then a horse on which the king doth astride, and let a royal diadem be placed upon his head, and let that man be led by many noble courtiers throughout the town, while all proclaim before him, this is what is done for the man whom the king desires to honour. Quick then, get garb and horse as you have said, and do this now to Mordechai, the Jew. Felinus, how comes it unto this? My pride, this Mordechai doth pierce. Huh. Mrs. Feather, there you are again. Your kerchief on your head and at your game of dusting, mopping, cleaning in this hole. You help me get the better of this troll. Your hardened heart is stiffened well enough. You did that work. This never was my plan. My plan? I never saw me dusting all this fluff or washing up and cleaning all this stuff. And now tonight she plans a second feast to feed the king and that immoral beast. My lovely queen, my darling, what's your wish? I'll half the kingdom give you for this kiss. Oh, sire, grant me my life. We are at risk. My people have been sold this day, destroyed this day. I cannot keep my silence long at bay. Why, who is he and where is he who dares to sell you all in slavery? This man is our adversary. This outrageous Haman. I cringe in terror now before your fury. Oh, don't make me stand before a judge and jury. I cannot bear your fake attempt to woke. I'm going in the garden for a smoke. Oh, beauteous queen, thou art lovelier than the night. Plead for my life, I beg thee. You! Still there? What doth he hear, and would you, what do you mean the Queen to ravish here behind this screen? What ho! Jailer! Cover his face! Sir, 
A stake is standing close to Haman's house. T'was made for Mordecai, saviour of the king. Let's hang this man instead, this evil louse. Oh, wait. That's what is written in the book to get the Jewish people off the hook. But where am I within this Jewish tale? They left me out, they cut my words, my voice. Oh, did they forget the acts of Mrs. Feather? I sent them Moses. How I loved them in the desert and brought them to the milk and honey land. I sent them prophets, men and women who were inspired. They never listened. They built their idols out of gold and bronze. They knelt before them day and night, Sabbaths kept they not. They never sanctified my holy days. I would have helped my people in their plight if only they'd remove this awful slight. They left me from the pages of this book, nowhere in this tale. However hard you look, you'll never find a nod to Mrs. Feather, cleaner, mopper, duster altogether. We turn to you, the witness of this plot, to ask if you will please adjudicate and be the counsel to pontificate. What shall be done, the Jews, to vindicate, to, to punish Haman on the stake he's built? Or show him mercy, pardon for his guilt? And if our Mrs. Feather had been writ within the pages of this story told, would that have changed the course of Haman's hold upon the Jews of Shushan Old? Enough from us. It's your turn now to speak. Address yourself right now in groups of four or five. Unmute your microphone. Turn on your camera to answer now these tasks. Is Mrs. Feather's peak quite justified? And furthermore, if in our little tale she had appeared or spoken through a veil, what outcome would we see? Haman impaled or pardon from the Jews who finally prevailed? 